Understanding Management and Accounting, Part 19, Relevant Costs and Sunk Costs. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. And this topic was taken from an article from the Wall Street Journal that we'll see in just a minute. And we had talked about relevant costs in a, and sunk costs in a prior video. And the challenge is in fast-changing markets that we have lots of changes going on. We have competitors changing their prices, consumer preferences change, new product introductions. A good example is Apple with the iPad, the iPhone, all the things they've introduced over the years. And as a result, managers need a tool to make short-run decisions about whether something's profitable or not. So the decision that's to be made here is whether or not an Aetna, a large insurer, should contract out work to manage their pharmacy benefit program. Aetna's pharmacy benefit manager, PBM, runs prescription drug programs for companies. And part of that process involves going out and finding the drugs and negotiating prices on the drugs that their patients need. The article mentioned that Aetna fills about 125 prescriptions a year for about 10 million members in their benefit program. And the big cost is negotiating prices with the pharmacy that fills the prescription. So if you go to Walgreens or CVS, Walgreens is going to provide a price if, for example, you're a male in your 50s on Lipitor, there's a price that Walgreens is going to charge you for that drug. So the solution was Aetna decided to partner with CVS Pharmacy, one of the large pharmacy companies like Walgreens. And the reason they decided to is, is that CVS can negotiate bigger drug discounts than Aetna can on its own. And CVS does that through their own pharmacy network. So now not only is CVS buying for themselves, they're buying for Aetna as well. Let's flip over to the article and look at a more, little more detail right here on management accounting. So Aetna contracts out to let CVS administer their pharmacy benefit program. Aetna runs drug, prescription drug programs for companies and negotiates prices for pharmacies where the prescriptions are actually filled. Why do they go to CVS? The idea is the pharmacy benefit giant CVS can ring bigger discounts on medicines from drug companies than the insurer can by itself. So operationally, part of this restructuring is, is that Aetna will transfer 800 of their PBM employees to CVS, and they'll retain 1,000 of the employees within their own company. So there are some salary and benefit things going on. The other thing that Aetna is looking for as an insurer is diversified businesses because they need a different stream of income besides simply co collecting an insurance premium and paying a claim if, if it's a death benefit for a life insurance policy, a medical claim for a medical insurance policy. So now they get a stream of income from providing a pharmacy benefit. So they're diversified, they're less dependent. What's that in this hope? We'll retain the drug portion among employers who might otherwise opt for a standalone PBM solution, which means they join another program to provide the pharmacy benefit for employees, while insured customers get a lower premium level, which means that if the cost for the drugs are low enough and the CVS program is effective enough, Aetna, as the insurer, can lower the premium cost to the insured person. Finally, let's look at what a uh, this decision might look like. So sunk costs. So sunk costs are past costs, costs that do not change or are not part of your decision making. Well, we can reduce those sunk costs by this merger, which is not officially a merger, but we're combining two businesses. We define sunk costs below here. Costs incurred which cannot be recovered regardless of future events. So here's where Aetna was before. People are writing insurance premiums for their medical coverage. 
and let's say a portion of the monthly revenue goes toward the pharmacy benefit. And they have these sunk costs that are contractual. They sign contracts at the beginning of the year and agreements. And let's say that the salary and benefit for staff, the people who handle the website, customer services, paperwork, is $65 per client. The fees they pay to the pharmacy for administering the plan, $20. The variable cost is the drug cost, which varies by how many prescriptions do we fill for what drug, and we'll say that's $10. So they have a profit of $5. I'm saying that these two are sunk costs because they're agreed to at the beginning of the year and the money's already spent. Well, what if we change the plan? Same monthly revenue, but we were able to, because of the merger, reduce our salary and benefit contractual costs from 65 to $61 by combining operations. Let's say CVS actually charges a slightly higher fee so they can earn a little more from administering this large plan. But then you look at the variable costs, the drug costs, and because of CVS's size and buying power, they're able to cut the drug costs in half. Where we end up with is a higher profit per client by merging with CBS, then we could get by ourselves and the largest portion of that is the drug cost. So even though the fee of the pharmacy is a little higher, the drug costs are substantially less, which means we end up in a better position. And I just want to click on these cells just to show you what's going on there. A couple more comments on Opportunity costs. I define it here as a benefit obtained by pursuing an alternative course of action. So you're giving, what are you giving up in other words? What are you giving up from choice B if you choose choice A? Good example is education. So the example I used in a prior video is Gail is a paralegal in her law firm. She's considering leaving her job to attend law school. So what does she lose? She will lose three years of income while she's a student. What does she gain? The goal is that after graduation, she will probably earn more money over a long period of time as an attorney that will more than make up three years of lost income as a paralegal. And our point here is it's not in the accounting records, but it's relevant, it's important to your decision making. What am I giving up? And we've seen that in prior management accounting videos. If I sell the product, to another division of the company internally versus selling it to a third party. What do I give up? That's the end of part 19. Here's our YouTube channel, our essential courses, which are one hour lectures on a variety of topics, management, financial, intermediate accounting, and others that are recorded on GoToMeeting are available. To register for one-on-one -on -one individual tutoring, or small group sessions using gotomeeting.com. Here you can contact us through the website. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.